Howdy! I have here the 1996 classic Fort Legorado. And get that right, it's Legorado, not Legorado. I bought this and built it and I'm now reviewing it at the behest of some folks you've probably heard of before. They go by Beyond the Brick. You see, the Hanlon brothers had this set. When they were growing up, they got a ton of enjoyment out of it. They are now high-level Patreon supporters, and as, their, as one of their high-level, high-tier rewards, they have requested this so that I can share some of the fun that they had with all of you. So let's check it out. This set came with 10 minifigures and three horses. And the big deal here, well, the biggest of big deals, in my opinion, is how big the, the whole thing is. It is the width of two base plates. It is the depth of two base plates. So it takes up a 64 by 64 space in its default configuration. Well, technically it's 64 by 62, depending upon exactly how you do it. I'll show you some of the options there. But if you look at just those numbers, you consider just those numbers for size, it's going to give you a slightly skewed impression of what you actually get here. Because just knocking a couple pieces out so I can temporarily pull this off screen. Well, there's a big old hole in the middle. That's a 32 by 32 hole. So ultimately, you build two base plates worth of stuff and then there's a base plate worth of space in the middle and then there are quarter base plate spaces in the corners so technically you're not actually building all that much but that's useful space in there because this is a fort and the idea is that it would be protecting troops and people and such inside so it's actually very good that they did this let's uh let's take a look at each of these 16 by 32 modules starting with this one here at the front I'm just going to leave the minifigures lined up there for now. I mean, they're just providing scale, if nothing else. Out front of this major entrance and lookout tower space and, and assembly, there are a couple of bushes down here, just the standard ones in regular green, and also a couple of very large barrels. These are the really, really big barrels, the 4x4 four four ones that are tall enough to have a minifigure stand inside. And if you sit a minifigure down, then you can completely hide them away. And you can also stack a couple of these on top of each other. So they're uh, pretty impressive pieces. Uh, anything that looks like a major decoration in this set, you know, a sticker or a print is a sticker. In this case right here for the main sign out front, it's a sticker across multiple pieces. Stamp. It's a, uh, what is that? A one by six by two, actually two, one by six by one bricks on top of each other and then a single sticker over the whole thing. I'm very fortunate to have gotten one of these, an original one, in very good condition. They also re-released this set in 2002 in identical form with just slightly different graphics for the instructions and the, the man, uh, excuse me, the, the box. Uh, this is a sticker up here. And beyond that, I mean, pretty much what you see is what you get turning it around. Oh yeah, uh, parrots, probably not necessarily geographically appropriate for the US, but I think they looked good. And I think that they add a lot to, uh, I don't know, just to the decoration of the thing to keep it from looking too plain and too much like just a, a log cabin setup, like an old Lincoln log setup. They also have some of these steer horns used up top for a little bit of extra flair. Turning this around to the back, the doors are barred up, so you actually cannot open these doors by default. That's a good thing, but it's very easy to remove this little bar assembly here, which actually has a couple of the old fingered, uh, uh, three and two fingered modified plates to give you hinges, so you could potentially use these for nice uh, custom builds. I mean, we just don't have those parts anymore. I think they are very, very valuable. And then, you know, you've got a balcony over here. You've got a balcony over here that you have access, kind of, to get up there. You can imagine figures coming up to here and then jumping out. How do they get up here? Well, once you get up to this level, then just flip the <laughs> ladder up and then jump across here again. Leap of faith. And then you can make it up to here. And each one of these towers can hold a single figure who also has kind of window spaces to shoot out. And you got the narrow ones on the sides. These roof parts are hinged themselves again using the old system 
the old hinge system, so no ratchets there. Not as strong as the as the modern stuff, but a lot more useful in my opinion, because you can get absolutely any angle out of them. And those also give you a little bit of extra convenience being able to hinge back like that to put figures down just directly from above. Not that this is really limited in space, but it is, like I said, just an extra convenience. But yeah, that's it for details and stuff here. Let's move on to the next thing, I guess. This side module is not as impressive, not even close. Has a couple of bushes outside and then, I mean, you've got windows there. They use a lot of the same pieces over and over again. This is a large panel palisade piece. They've got the one by twos and they've got one by fours. You know, gives you that vertical log look, which I think actually looks really good. And it looks even better, The, in my opinion, the closer you get to the side. So like straight on like that, it looks a little bit plain, but here it starts to get some character and the lower you get as well. Thinking of it from the perspective of the minifigures, it just starts to look more interesting to me. You know, it really evokes the old, not necessarily West, but you know, that, that is one way to look at it, the cowboy era. So, all right, that's that. As for the inside, yeah, there's not really anything going on here at all. You've got the walkway, so you can just put lots and lots of soldiers across the, the catwalk there to, uh, you know, have them guarding the place. They can be shooting from up there. And yeah, that's it. There's a single ladder to get up there. This one doesn't have the flip up function, doesn't really need it. Although I suppose if you had bad guys coming inside, then you could pull up the ladder and then kind of try to hide it. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, that's that. Next. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, this is much more interesting. The other side, if you will, not that either of them has to specifically be the side. I mean, this could be used as the front if you want. Now I'll show you how easy it is to, to move these around and adjust their positions and everything. But yeah, there's a lot more substance here. We don't have the, the windows in this case, the openings. This one has a little bit of terrain that's just built into it, just a rock piece. That's a classic old gray, old light gray that is. Uh, big ugly rock piece that's integrated in there to good effect. This has a great little uh, hidden feature built into it that uh, isn't isn't uh, it's not advertised at all by the design but if you grab this bush or the piece underneath it look at this you can find hidden treasure under there that's that's really good those are supposed to be the same color but they have just one set and you know depending upon the a the age and exactly uh how much of the the yellow color was sprayed over the the transparent yellow is sprayed over the chrome silver some of them will be more yellowish and some of them will be more silver looking for the, the gold coins so back here we have another gate another set of doors once again barred up from the inside a couple more parrots to make it look extra fancy and these are just at the same level the the, the side you know basically it has the the single story and then the open balcony going all the way around when you put all these together. And then this has the additional story up above, which gives you another lookout tower. All right. So for this one, looking around the back, once again, another of the flip up ladder functions. So the ladder lets you get up to here and then flip it there. Now it lets you get up there. It's a lot better than having absolutely nothing. I'll tell you that nowadays we mostly get nothing for figures to access higher levels and everything. You just have to use your imagination. Just that one little thing is so cool. Even if it's not the most realistic thing, it's cool. It works. Got a little tunnel here. I don't know. There's something special about that. Something interesting. Like you can imagine people uh, hiding away in there, or you can use that as a, a storeroom, have some ammunition up there for the guys that are defending from up above, you know, uh, got some flames out here. Once again, using the sticker for the flag up top, this old flag piece, which does include uh, everything that you see here this is all molded as one piece including the one by one cylinder at the base and then this almost technic like miniature technic axle it's it's a cross in cross section and then the flag is also built into that as well but that's that and that's pretty much it here so there's the bar take that off and the doors can open and that's that Finally, this module, the headquarters module, is the one that you build last. Notice that I'm, I'm showing you 
the best looking side. Well, you, you'll see that it's the best looking once I turn it around, but this is the inside. So the idea was that this would be placed at the back or something. Of course, again, you can put it on the side if you want, you can use it as the front if you want. But the idea was that you know, this was all interior space here. Notice the bar for the doors, the shorter doors is down here, but from the outside, yeah, that doesn't quite work, right? Because if this is all open, so it would have been nice if they had put a, a, a removable wall right here, but they didn't didn't have so many uh, removable large things like that back in the day. They didn't use jumpers and they also did not have what they have today, the modified one by four tiles with only two studs on top that are often used for breakaway sections and whatnot. But anyway, the headquarters building, well, this is actually quite interesting. Uh, it's just a card room or at least a lounge. Yeah, I, I, I guess lounge is a, a better, more appropriate, more complete uh, term for it. Uh, you just have a couple of pretty comfy looking chairs there. That actually is a print, a nice classic print for the one by two tile there to show you a hand of cards. And then some folks are, you know, or one of them is, is taking a drink. These windows have the shutters and they can also be opened part way. So you can do one of these and then you can do that as well. Or you can do it all the way like so. I'm kind of double layers there. Nice to get these light gray uh, shutter pieces, which were also useful for like sci-fi stuff and more modern things. But uh, there's this. So that's a fireplace, right? Interesting, right? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's the thing. It, it's, it's actually, it's actually a secret because behind the fire, if you pull this out, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but you can pull this out and there's some additional storage space back there. So a couple more coins, the coins always came in a, a pack of four with different denominations. They would come on a, a little a sprue together and there are just some additional ones that can be stored back there and that's the inside of a big ugly rock piece technically a medium ugly rock piece but what's best here by far is a major major surprise because this is the jail section if you look down below you see bars not the friendly kind of bars not like banisters There's banisters on the other side on the upper level but this is jail look at this look at this huge door specialized set of pieces that are no longer used kind of fancy kind of cool again very very specialized gives you plenty of room for i don't know you can almost get like jack stone figures in there it's just so oversized compared to everything that they they did back in in those days uh yeah so all that all that under there all that space over here is jail cell well here's what can happen if you turn this table right here, depending upon what's going on with the card game, you turn the table and <laughs> where did that go? So if the guy sitting in this seat was cheating, you just rotate the table and he goes to jail immediately. How perfect is that? How convenient is that? That just gives you so many options for fun that you can have as somebody actually playing with this, you know, as, as a human with the hand of God coming in here wanting to do things with the people and just, you know, you can come up with scenarios, but it gets even better than that. Because what if the cheat is actually able, so I'm going to reset this by opening the door, bring this back up, bring this back into its diagonal position. There we go. What if the cheat is armed and the other guy is not? Or what if the guy in this seat is the one being cheated what if the cheat is over here and this guy just wants to get rid of him for some reason well if you rotate the table the other way then that seat goes away so that one in this case uh, does not lead out into total freedom because there are still doors there but i guess the idea is or at least one of the things that i thought of that that you could do there is say you know i need you to get out of town you know never come back so I'm going to help you out a little bit and uh, I'm not expecting to see your face around here around these parts ever, ever again. So you just have those two options and it's so simple how it was done. There's just a little part underneath here that has a couple of blocks and yeah, you can do both if you want. You can put one in jail and have the other escape or uh, 
get kicked out. Just, I don't know. It's just, it's just a fun thing. It's a really fun thing. And it's not too difficult to reset. And unlike most action features in the modern age, it doesn't scream with a sticker and an arrow and everything saying, use that and rotate it this way. And then the following will happen. You know, it's just really integrated in. And again, one of these roofs, the way it's set up with the hinges just makes it so easy to get access in there. So that's good. And then over here, ooh, light gray, old light gray door. That's nice. And then there are the banister pieces. So bars that are, that are not the, the intimidating kind in, in that case there. So yeah, and then you also have, again, access to get up to the upper level, thanks to stairs, very straightforward. So all of this just works. All this just makes sense for the figures. You even have the, the fireplace chimney on the side, kind of integrated in with some of the rock face work on, on the side over there. So that's just all good. Also, uh, down below, you see a little blue back there? Well, that's related to this. So there's access from the outside. Remember, this is all outside here. This is inside access from the outside. You can use it how you want with your own role playing and whatnot. You can steal a weapon case from the base, from the fort. It's a perfect little weapon case. Fits one realistic, like post Civil War Winchester style rifle. It can be held a couple different ways in the hand, and I'll, I'll show you those with the minifigures as well. But just such a simple build, but it works perfectly. Hold that. So you can steal that, or you can use it for deliveries. It's like your uh, UPS package delivery uh, slot there <laughs> on the side. Lastly, I'm going to cover the magic of putting all this stuff together. Uh, first of all, to put it back into that square form that takes up the most space, it's pretty straightforward. And then what they want you to do is just put a one by two piece at each of the corners. You just put it right down there. It's just an extra one of these. I don't have it on my hand or in my hand right now, but just one of these. You just stick it right down in there. That's all it takes to, you know, basically tack the corners together. But you don't have to do it exactly like that. Uh, where does this go? It goes right there, I believe. I think that's correct. Yes, it goes across actually. Provides some structural support there. But you don't have to do it that way. You can do it this way, right? You can go side to side. You can make this whole thing super, super long, almost to where it looks like a town unto itself. And you can rearrange those. You know, I mentioned that uh, you know, maybe you didn't want to use this as the front or you didn't want to use this as the side. Over here, I could put that in the back. Or I could put these two together like so and you just start to get some really interesting looking setups although this is backwards this should be like this technically technically speaking it's supposed to be like this this is supposed to be the outside but i don't know i kind of like if if i'm going to do things differently if i'm not going to have it all in that perfect square formation i kind of like the idea of having this exposed area facing away from the street if you will you know have this outside. It's just a different way to look at it. And I think this works pretty well. And also if you want to have a little bit of space to break things up so you don't have all the, the nice looking super built up stuff together, then just use this as a spacer to provide a little extra. And I just don't have enough room to show all this side by side, but you know, provide an, a little bit of extra length. And then you can do an L sort of thing with this spring this along an edge or a corner like that. I don't know. I, I like being able to reconfigure things. And this makes it very easy to do that. It also makes it very easy to connect them together with the one by twos. I'll go ahead and put this into a, again, correct orientation. So then this would, uh, this one's actually, this one's actually blocked, sorry, um, by the door. I do it this way. Wasn't expecting that. That door knob actually sticks out just a little bit. Interesting. All right, so maybe I'll have to put this one at the other end instead if I wanted to do it this way. But, you know, you have those options. Also, you can just bring a couple of things together. If you want to turn this into a couple of small bases that are in turn, you know, like this can be a small outpost. It's nice that it still has the, the outside access, you know, that main door. 
and then put this together to create others. And there, now you actually have a completely, completely different layout for this. And it works. It's, it's totally believable. It's as believable as, as the main one. Uh, you know, turn this into just your main jail space over there. Let that be the, the sheriff's office instead or something, you know. And uh, this will be your fort for your military. Just options, man. Just options. And it's good. Look at that. It looks nice, doesn't it? It's complete. It goes all the way around. Again, we've got this open space here. But it's not difficult at all to fill that in if you had any kind of... Uh, just regular pieces, or especially if you had just a number of extra windows, you could very quickly fill that in and make this just feel a lot better. I, I like that so much. Lego just doesn't do complete structures and enclosures very frequently at all anymore. So this kind of feels like a luxury. And then the ability to reconfigure is just a secondary luxury on top of that. Very cool. I'm going to try this. I'm going to keep all the minifigures still lined up here on this original base plate because there is quite a bit of repetition here as you look closer. Check it out. These first three dudes on the left are the same, except one of them doesn't have the bandana piece on there. But the torsos are the same and the heads are the same. <laughs> so that's a thing. And around the back, there's nothing else to see because this was 1996. So no alternate faces, no printing on the backs of these torsos. The next two dudes with the gray facial hair are also the same. They're intended to be lieutenants, and one of them is set up as a bugler, so he's got the horn, and once again, they put down the chrome silver and then put a little bit of, of like shellac over it in a transparent yellow, and sometimes it comes out more goldish, sometimes it comes out more yellowish, sometimes it comes out, well, not so well and just silvery, but at least this one still has all the chrome on it so it's not chipped off like they tend to do over time and he's also got a, a, a saber or, or cutlass there and then finally this is intended to be a uh, what did they say a colonel a colonel this is a, a unique character he has the printed hat and also a different print for his torso so these two have identical heads and torsos and this one is different you can see the the stars there at the top and also the uh, the center stitching and buttoning of, of his jacket is done differently. And of course he has a different face. So that's that. And then we get to these dudes. So it kind of looked like the, the soldiers and also this one here were designed around the same time, at least with their faces. You know, they, they're, they're kind of advanced versions, advanced derivatives of the original Lego smiley faces. But then the bandits, this guy here, this guy here, this guy here. Well, their face designs are rather different. And especially this one. Is that a nose that I see? Lego, is that a nose? Shame on you. Shame on you if you put a nose on a minifigure. I know it's been done a number of times. But still, shame on them every single time they put a nose on a figure like that. Especially if it was just a, you know, a made-up character. And this one has a stick of dynamite for breaking into something. Uh, you also see some realistic revolvers used here, and I do need to take some stuff off so you can see the prints just a little bit better. But once again, no print to be seen around the back. The cowboy here, so he's not intended to be a bandit. Uh, that just looks great to me. That torso, the level of detail on that torso, that looks really, really good to me. And I, I appreciate the use of the slightly more classic styled face. You know, it, it is definitely a 90s derivative. It's a little bit thicker with the printing. Um, but it still works for me and still has that very Lego kind of kind of feel, you know, it just feels very authentic to me. I just took the bandana off that guy so you can see the rest of the print on the torso just to see the, the entire thing. This is the card shark here, so he would definitely be up in that card room and he would definitely be on the left hand side <laughs> being uh, uh, dumped down into the jail, I would say, most of the time. And again, uh, kind of a different face, right? Unique printing. I'm gonna, well, you see him, all right? I'm gonna take that bandana off, so you can see the rest of his face also, and the rest of the torso printing. So this is another one that looks a bit different. 
So it's not necessarily that classic derived look. I like this one. I don't like this one so much. This one's okay. It's different, you know? And this one's also different in, I think, a good way. And his torso print is unique. I gave him two of the revolvers. You don't have to do that. You know, you could give one to this guy over here as a sidearm, whatever you want to do. But once again, the instinct is to turn these around, to see what the print looks like on the back of the torso. There is none in any of the cases. Lastly, let's check out the horse and horse drawn action here. So two just regular horses with saddles. You got the brown here, you got the black here. You can change the positions of the saddles if you want to make these two match or anything. This one has the printed flag that is a separate piece. That's a separate part. There we go, just on a bar. The, uh, this is the longer version of the bar with stopper. It's a 7.7 .7 length rather than seven, I think they, they switched it to. Was it seven or six? It might have been six that they switched it to, but it's the longer version. Um, and then another weapon on this side. This one also has a weapon. You can put one on either side if you want. And then here we've got the horse-drawn carriage set up with a trailer as well. I don't know what those were called back in the day. Pull the weapon off this guy's uh, hand and he can sit right there. And to help him with the horse, they also come with a whip. So there's that. And he's pulling some artillery along. Uh, they got the larger wheels used here, smaller wheels used here. This is just on a hook, so you can deploy it like so. This is the older, well, one of the older styles of, of cannons here, which has that little insignia on top of it. And this one did not actually shoot like the modern ones do. There's nothing to pull out here. You can change the angle, but then what are you going to do with it? You're going to pretend is, is exactly what you're going to do with it. These are intended to represent cannonballs over here. You can have... Uh, 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 some a weapon or some sort of accessory or flag on either side there and that is that now additionally for these horses they also included fill-in pieces so there's for one of them there's for the other and the final piece to fill in for the white horse right there so if you're not using the saddles then you can fill in that space to make them look just like regular horses. In this case, you got the harness. So, you know, put that piece in to take the place of where it is if you want them to just be roaming wild. And then also, finally, there are four extra cannonball pieces that are the just the one by one cylinders and the classic gray. Do I have all four with me? Yes, I do. So there are those. And you get four of the one by two palisade pieces, the textured bricks. So these are like, not quite spare parts, but just other things included in the set as well that are intended to be there. Here's an extra cutlass or saber. Which is it? Which is it? An extra Winchester. Semi-realistic thing, which can be held either from the stock or from the pistol grip that they put in just to make it a little bit more usable for the minifigs. And finally, you also got this little uh, feather plume part and the reason for that well, it really had nothing to do with this set it just happened to be that there's a single sprue that lego made that includes this and two of these the horn just the white part the steer horns so they wanted to use these horns so they included one sprue and you end up with an extra feather plume piece that you can just use as like a fan because you know, it's probably going to be in an area that's fairly hot. So while you're just, uh, you know, having a drink and having a card game that's getting very tense up in the headquarters building, in one of your hands, you can have this to keep yourself cool. Now, speaking of cool, how cool is this set? I don't have the original box anymore, but I do have the original instructions in really good condition. So that's, that's what the box art looked like right there. Nice, uh, nice painting in the background. Nice terrain around there. And on the back, they showed you some suggestions for different ways to build it. And, you know, the, the types of pieces that are included in this set, the types of pieces that make up the overwhelming majority of what's in this set, just lend themselves really, 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 really well 
to being reused for other things. I mean, ultimately, yeah, they're specialized pieces, but they're, you know, they're, they're like bricks, right? They're mostly just structural stuff that can be used to create walls and such. So the possibilities for rebuilds here were absolutely endless, really good stuff. Would they do something like this today? Absolutely not. Because this had, what was it 687 pieces if I remember that correctly? And back in the day, it cost $85. That was for the original 1996 uh, release, around a 12 cent or so price to part ratio. Um, but adjust that for inflation and you get to about $140, which takes you to about a 20 cent price to part ratio. Oh yeah, Lego used to be so much cheaper back in the day. Mm, <laughs> I don't know about that. Reality uh, has major issues with that, that suggestion. Uh, Lego today would not do things like this because, well, they don't do stuff like that. Not even in the five plus range. You know, not until you actually, not even in the Duplo range do they do things that simple. You know, they always put in a lot more detail, which unfortunately results in things that are either way more expensive or much smaller than they would have been in these days. Put all this stuff together again, like I showed at the beginning, a four by four base plate space for this one set. That's significant. And though, though, most of that space is unused, is either open base plate, cool that they had base plates back then, right? Or open space with just nothing whatsoever, not even base plates. But it was usable by us humans, by us regular people who would just put stuff in there and on there and could build upon the extra space, the extra blank, boring space on, on the base plate. That's all useful stuff. This was really, really cool. And I'm torn. I, I, I pause there because I'm, I'm just so torn thinking about just how low the level of detail was. Okay, just thinking about this one particular set, not even thinking about the entire era, how low the level of detail is, how little is actually here compared to if Lego did another Fort Lego Rado today in 2020, not as a re-release, but as a reimagining to modern standards. It would be half the size or it would cost twice as much. And I'm talking about twice as much as the inflation adjusted price. It would have so many details to it, probably would have like half as much space to actually place minifigures in there though and to actually do stuff with it. There would be action features built into it. Some of them would be very clever. Some of the building techniques would be very clever and would look very, very nice. There would be far less repetition in its look but it just wouldn't be as conducive to imaginative play nor uh, expansion and customization, you know? It's really, really interesting. Which is better is the question. Of course, folks my age and, you know, the, the, the Hanlon's age and older will frequently say, well, this is better. But a lot of that is definitely uh, tinged by by nostalgia you know which is objectively better i don't know that's what i'm really really struggling with i like this myself i would have preferred something like this to a modern version of it even today uh, I, I still would uh, if i was a if i was a kid or as an adult really wanting to build up something that looks like this you know to to build up a a frontier defense fort. This is just such a good starting point and I can easily reconfigure things. I can easily modify it and then I can add in my own details if I want. Now, if I wasn't able to buy anything additional, if I didn't have spare pieces to go with it, or if, you know, my other sets that I had were all from a completely different theme where the colors just wouldn't match the parts that I have for those, you know, were all blue and green, you know, or, you know, just something completely incompatible then what then the newer version would definitely look better on display by far in its default form but for play hmm, there's extra enjoyment that comes from something looking nice but this is just better 
I think. So let me know what you think about that, about that, that issue. This is a really interesting one for that because so much of it is open space, so much more so than even like the classic medieval sets and such. So much of this is open space, especially when you configure it in the correct way. Huh. And yet you still get value from that. Big, 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 big thanks are due to Beyond the Brick, the Hamlin brothers, who, like I said, are our top tier uh, Patreon supporters and they used their top tier reward to request this. I, of course, appreciate their support very, very much. You know, they've, they've come over, they've, they've interviewed me uh, uh, on a, a couple of trips out here and they've done tours of, of my city and some of my stuff. And that's all very much appreciated. I also very much appreciate their choice of this set. It's something that I personally would never have picked I would never have gone back. It's just not a not a theme that I'm interested in, generally speaking. Not even Lego specific. Just I'm not into the the Western stuff. I'm not into the 19th century stuff at all. Nah, eh, just I'm just not. But this was really cool. I feel like I learned a good deal from this. It has me thinking, to be sure, and it's just it's just enjoyable to go through it. And I'm really lucky that I got one that's in such fantastic shape as well. So thank you for watching. Thanks again to Beyond the Brick. Check them out if you haven't. If you haven't, I don't know what's wrong with you. If you like Lego, you definitely should have checked them out by now a lot. And um, yeah, I've got the build video for this as well. It's, a, it's not as smooth as usual because the parts weren't in bags. They were sorted differently and the instructions are a little bit more difficult to follow back in these days or were a little bit more difficult to follow. But anyway, it's all there. I made a couple mistakes, but I do fix them in that. I've got the real time version and the speed build version as well. Whichever you prefer, check one out and I'll talk to you again soon.